All right, boys and girls, so we have been studying all these different artists, and it is now time for us to commit them to memory. So we first started with Rene Magritte. He was the surrealist, and all of you drew an apple. So Rene Magritte, we're going to lock that name in our minds here. Then we had Paul Clay. It looks like Clee, but it's Clay. And he was the one that we read the story about with the, the cat and the bird in his memory and stuff. Uh, then we had George O'Keefe. Some of you did not have her, but you need to learn about her anyway. She's awesome. George O'Keefe was um, an artist who spent a lot of time in New Mexico, and she painted a lot of things from nature. And those of you who had this lesson were able to paint um, this painting, which was a scene from above the clouds um, when she was on an airplane ride. Uh, then we had Gustav Klimt. Of course, you remember that. He's the guy with the robes, and we did those awesome gold paintings. Then we had Henri Rousseau, our jungle guy. And then we ended it with Henri Matisse, the man who, um, the older man who was uh, using his scissors to cut out shapes that reminded him of the ocean. So, I am now going to go over the titles of the art and the artists, and uh, we're just going to try and see how many of these we can remember, and then we'll just keep working on it over the next few weeks. So I'm going to start off with Rene Magritte's paintings, and good grief, Rene Magritte has some pretty intense titles. This one is called Not To Be Reproduced. When you reproduce something, it means you end up with a second one. So if you think about it, when you look into a mirror, it's like you've been reproduced because there are now two of you. Now take a look back at his painting and you see he's looking into the mirror, but hmm, he's not seeing the front of his face as it like a typical mirror. So I think that's why Rene Magritte gave it this title, because he's not to be reproduced, which is kind of interesting. Rene Magritte. The next one is the listening room, and this is this bizarre painting where there's this gigantic apple in a, in a room here, or some people have thought maybe the apple is normal sized, it's just the room that's very small. Mm. But some kids have said they think they know why it's called the listening room, because they said if you were in this room and you were trying to hear each other, you would have to listen very carefully because you were all smashed up against the walls here trying to hear each other. Some people too have said, um, you know, maybe the apple can't hear because he doesn't have ears. I don't know. It's just called The Listening Room and it's by Rene Magritte. Next painting here is Man in a Bowler Hat. We learned before that this kind of hat is called a bowler hat. So it makes sense that this painting would be called Man in a Bowler Hat. You could think it'd be man in a bowler hat with a bird flying in front of his face, but it's not. And it's man in a bowler hat, Rene Magritte. Then we have time transfixed. Now it's kind of interesting. We have this clock. We have this train that's coming out and then stopping. We have candlesticks with no candles on it. And we have the title Time Transfixed. Now transfixed, I wanted to explain that word to you and I found this picture and I went, yep, that's it. Do you see how these cats are like, Duh! like they are like, I will never look away. I'm going to stay like this forever. Well, that's what transfixed means. Transfixed means very still as if nailed to the spot. So when we look back at this painting, it kind of makes sense that that train is transfixed. It's not going anywhere. Same with this. And there are many, many other reasons we could probably think of for why it has that title. Now, here's another title, but I think I have a feeling once you learn it, you're going to love knowing this word. This word is clairvoyance. Can you say clairvoyance? Say it again, clairvoyance. All right, now you need to have that be your favorite word because clairvoyance means that you can see into the future. So you could be like, with my clairvoyance, I can see that we are going to win the game. And then you sound super smart and athletic. Now, how does this guy, how is he using clairvoyance? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly. He's looking at an egg that he can see into the future, so he knows it's going to turn into a bird. 
that's why that's a very cool title by Renee Magritte, Clairvoyance. And finally, the one that we studied, Son of Man. Some people have said that this is called Son of Man because we can see the person, but and we can see most of them, but this apple is in front of his face, which kind of makes us feel like we don't know who he is. Like we can see all of him, but if we can't see his face, we're kind of like, I don't know who he is. And the one thing you would know is that he is the son of a man. So we're going to go with that. So that's what he called it, Son of Man by Rene Magritte. Now, Rene Magritte's paintings are kind of hard. When you see Paul Clay's paintings, you're going to be so grateful. Red Balloon. Got it. Check by Paul Clay. Dream City. Very dreamy. The Rose Garden. Kind of these lollipop roses by Paul Clay, Rose Garden. Castle and Sun. Kind of like direct titles here, Paul Clay. Cat and Bird by Paul Clay. Gotta love his titles, straight to the point. Now we're moving on to Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe had some great titles. Um, hers are also kind of to the point. This one's called Oriental Poppies. Um, poppies are a type of flower that grow. They have very delicate, sweet little petals. And then they have this large area in the middle where the pistil and the stamen are. And um, on an oriental poppy, it's very black on the inside. You can see it here. And that's, that's just what an oriental poppy is. So that's why this painting is called Oriental Poppy. This one by Georgia O'Keeffe is called White Flower on Red Earth. Gotta love it. This one is called Rust Red Hills. If you've ever seen rust on, on metal or something, you'll know that it's, it's kind of this color. So that's why it's called Rust Red Hills. This is the one that we studied, The Sky Above the Clouds by George O'Keefe. Then we have this one, Ladder to the Moon. This one is called Cow Skull with Calico Rose. A lot of kids have been remembering cow skull with rose, but calico rose, it just sounds fun. Say calico. Calico, calico. And this is actually a picture of a calico rose. Kind of neat. Um, so, cow skull with calico rose by Georgia O'Keeffe. This is interesting. It's called pelvis. Now, to me, it kind of looks like a white frame with a blue sky, and we can see the moon in between there. But actually, the pelvis is a bone. It's this bone right here on our body, and you'll see that the pelvis has a little hole in it. This was actually a bone that she had found from a bull, and the, on a bull, the pelvis is right here, and there's a little hole in it right here. So she would have held that up to the sky and looked through it, and that's why this painting is called Pelvis, because she's using the pelvis bone kind of as a frame for the sky, which is kind of neat. Now we're going to move on to Gustav Klimt. These are pretty easy. Portrait of Adele. Not the singer. Don't sing. This is Portrait of Adele. Then we have The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. Tree of Life by Gustav Klimt. And my favorite, I think I'm going to, um, you know, maybe I should have used this name for one of my daughters. Fritza. Wouldn't you like to be named Fritza? Fritza. Hey, Fritza! This is a portrait of Fritza. There she is, looking very beautiful. Uh, Henri Rousseau, our jungle guy. Very direct titles. Apes in the Orange Grove. A place where oranges grow is usually called a grove. So it's Apes in the Orange Grove. Here we have Fight Between a Tiger and a Buffalo. This is what a buffalo looks like. See those big old horns on there? Massive animal. If you come back here, you can see the horns there. You can see his eyes. He's like, I think I am losing the fight. Because the tiger definitely looks like he's winning the fight between a tiger and a buffalo by Henri Rousseau. Next, man attacked by a jaguar by Henri Rousseau. Let's keep going. Here we have Hungry Lion attacking an antelope. This is what an antelope looks like. This is what it looks like when it's being attacked by a lion. 
whose stomach is growling because he is so hungry by Henri Rousseau. Now, we're almost done. Matisse, last week, the guy with the scissors, amazing. He had visited a place called Polynesia. Polynesia is an area right by Australia where there are all of these beautiful islands. It is gorgeous. This is what it looks like. And Matisse traveled there and said, oh my goodness, that is gorgeous. So from memory, he decided to cut out pieces of paper that reminded him of it. He first did Polynesia the sea. He was just thinking of just the water alone. And then he kind of imagined himself even higher up in the air in Polynesia where he is imagining the birds that are flying above the ocean. So very cool. So we have Polynesia the sea and Polynesia the air. And now I want to go there because it looks awesome. Uh, this is called the beasts of the sea. A lot of things that are representing some of the big animals in the ocean by Henri Matisse. This is called the lagoon. If you look here, a lagoon is sort of a body of water. And so that's what he kind of represents here, the lagoon. We learned this one just last week, the parakeet and the mermaid. Easy peasy. I just wanted to show you how big it is in real life. Isn't that awesome? Love it. And last but not least, the sea by Henri Matisse. Now, we are about to have a quiz. We're going to have a little friendly competition, so we'll see how you do.